Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. In just a moment, Two Horse Parley. Written especially for Suspense by Walter Black. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston gives you real flavor, full, rich tobacco flavor. Winston's easy drawing, too. The flavor comes right through to you. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. A modern filter? Sure, Winston has it. But that's only the beginning of a Winston. Up front, up where it really counts, Winston packs exclusive filter blend. Light, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. Filter blend. That's why it's fun to smoke Winston. America's best-selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. It's me, Porco. Johnny Sheldon. Hello, Johnny boy. Your stooge tells me my credit's no good. He tells it right, kid. All right, so I'm a little behind. <laughs> you and me got different ideas about what's little. To me, four grand is very yeah, big. Porco, I'm good for it. Look, I got a sure thing in the fifth of Belmont. Eight to one. Let me 500 and you have your money back. If the nag wins. Uh -oh. With your luck, she'll finish last. Anyway, there ain't gonna be any more bets, kid. Not until we straighten out this four grand. You see, I don't own this joint. I just run it for some very big businessmen. You understand? They, uh, like to get paid on time. I've always paid before. Chicken feed. You've been losing heavy the past couple of weeks, and my bosses ain't happy with me for letting you get in so deep. And they, uh, especially ain't happy with you. So let them sue me. Oh, you better watch your lip, little man. Neither we get that four grand or you get a real fancy working over. All right. All right. Can I use your phone? Be my guest. I'll listen in if you don't mind. What are you dialing? Long distance. Goes on your bill. Your, uh, operator, I want Chicago. Diversity 27161. Yes, I'll wait. Who's in Chicago? My aunt. She's been footing your bills? Yeah. Wondered where your bankroll came from. Yeah, she thinks I'm in New York to attend the conservatory. All right, don't look like that. I, when I was a kid, she wanted me to be a pianist. Never let up on me. You any good? Well, she thought I was. I never wanted any part of it, but when she suggested I come east to study, I took her up on it. And she thinks you've been studying all this time? Yes. <laughs> she gonna hold still for a four-gram bite? I have an angle. Hello? Who's this? Uh, it's me, Aunt Mita. Johnny. Wrong. No, no, I'm just excited, that's all. I have some terrific news for you. Are you sure you're all right, dear? Yeah, listen, Aunt Mita, you heard of Arthur Rogowski, that fabulous teacher in Paris? Yes, dear. Why? Is he in New York? Well, not now, but he was. And he heard me play, and he's offered to let me study with him. It's the opportunity I've been waiting for. He almost never takes students anymore. Well, it, it would really put the finishing touches to my training, you know? And the only thing is, he wants me to join him in two weeks, and, uh... Well, he's, he's very expensive. How expensive, John? Well, with plain fare, tourist class, and uh, bare living expenses for six months, it's going to come to over $6,000. That's quite enough, uh, little kid. John, dear, I guess you haven't received my letter yet. What letter? I I'm lonesome, dear. I want you to come home. Oh. After all, I spent a considerable amount of money on your training already. Isn't it natural? I'd want to hear the result. Well, if I can just have this six months with Rogowski, I'd have the polish I need. It's been over two years, John. I think you've progressed enough so that you could at least play for me. Well, well, sure, Aunt Mita. I could send you a record. I'm lonesome, my boy. I'd like to be with you. But this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Mr. Rogowski can wait a few more weeks, John. Don't you feel you owe me this much? Well, yes, of course. I'll send you the plane fare, dear. I'll expect you by Friday. But, Aunt Mita, if you'd only... Yeah, she hung up. Now what? You tell me. Okay. 
fly back to Chicago, play her a tune, and get but the dough. I don't play well enough. She'd never fall for it. Well, you figure something out. You've got four weeks. I could just get somebody to play now, for she me. don't want no record. She said so. Oh, no, I mean go back with me. You see, she's blind. She wouldn't know the difference. Well, okay, hire somebody. Or, uh... Better yet, what about that good-looking girlfriend of yours? Oh, no. Well, now, don't she play piano in that club I can't around? drag her into this. I wouldn't. You ain't got any choice, Johnny boy. <laughs> so that's it, honey. Now you know everything there is to know about it. Makes a lovely picture, doesn't it? Oh, I, I knew you were betting, but $4,000, Johnny. How'd you ever get in so deep? Well, honey, you lose some, you figure you'll make it back in the next race. It just keeps building. And besides, what's the difference how? I'm in a spot, and Aunt Mita's the only one who can help get me out. Uh, I'm not good enough to make your aunt think I've been studying classical piano for two you years. You were, you were once, Eve. All it'll take is a little practice, and we have until Friday. Oh, she'd know, Johnny. Even if she is blind, she'd know. How? Honey, I take you back with me, introduce you as my fiancé. Then when she asks me to play, you sit down and start in. It'll be over quick, honey. Now listen, then I'll be able to pay Porco off. Yeah. Now you'd like me to stop playing the horses, wouldn't you? All right, Johnny, I'll go with you. I'll play for your aunt. Just a moment, we will return for the second act of Suspense. Bye, Joan. I'm heading for the ballpark. I'm late now. Gil Hodges, look at the list of errands you've left for me to do again. And I'm so busy with spring cleaning. I know, but it's spring cleaning time for the car, too. So please be sure to get the motor oil changed in the car and get a fresh Fram filter, too, honey. A fresh Fram filter, Gil? <laughs> what for? To keep the oil clean. Dirt and sludge can ruin an engine. Nothing fills motor oil with sludge faster than the short runs you make, shopping and taxing the children to school. Just take the car in and ask for a Fram. A Fram? How will they know what I mean? They'll know. More service stations sell Fram filters than any other brand. Nothing keeps oil clean like a Fram filter. The Dodgers' popular first baseman, Gil Hodges, sure knows his filters. He knows how important it is to change oil filters at least every 5,000 miles. It's Fram for him, for you too. Fram filters. Here you are, driver. Well? Welcome to the old homestead, Eve. She lives here all alone? Mm, that's the way she wants it, honey. Come on. Johnny. Huh? Well, couldn't we... I mean, do we have, have to... Have to fool her? Yeah. No. No, honey, we can tell her the truth, then she'll throw me out and we can go back to New York and face Brother Porco. Oh, but isn't there some other way? Yeah, honey, you think I haven't tried to think of one? I'm not proud of what I've done or what I am, Eve. But face it, life is a jungle. It's eat or be eaten. And my instinct for self-preservation is very, very strong. But maybe she'd understand. Well, here we are, Aunt Mita. And gosh, it's good to be home. I'm so glad John brought you back home with him, Eve. I've worried about him for so long. It's nice to know he isn't alone. Well, Eve's my fiancé, Aunt Mita, not my nurse. Sometimes with men, it's the same thing, dear. Isn't that right, Eve? Uh, oh, I, I guess so. You sound nervous, dear. You certainly don't have to be on my account. Well, she, uh, now, Aunt Mita, she wasn't sure that you'd approve of her. Heavens, what a thought. <laughs> not approve of such a fine and lovely young lady. Yeah, now, there, what did I tell you, Eve? Aunt Mita can tell more without seeing than most people can with. I'm looking so forward to hearing you play, John. Yeah, well, uh, uh, later, Aunt Mita, we're kind of dragged out from the plane ride, you know? Of course. It can wait until after dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come along, Eve. 
I'll show you to your room. Sometimes I was afraid I was being too insistent about John's practicing, and yet, look how it's paid off. Yes, sir. Look how it's paid off. Sounds like one of those modern what? composers. Huh? Oh, Dr. Hannah. Well, say, I didn't know you were there. I let myself in. Oh? Privilege of long acquaintance. How are you, John? Fine, fine. Thank you. How are you, Doctor? Uh, how have you been? Uh, keeping well? Oh, sure. Sure, why not? You look a little pale. Oh? Uh, not enough sun, eh? Well, I guess I uh, have been sticking pretty close to the piano. Of course, of course. <laughs> say, excuse my asking, Doctor, but mm. you're here to see Aunt Mita, aren't you? That and... Uh, I heard you were coming home today. I'd already planned to give her a checkup, so I guess you'd call it combining business with pleasure. I see. After all, I haven't seen you in some time. How is she? I mean, how's her heart? Well, John, so far, uh, what's the saying? A sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Why borrow trouble? Let's hope we can both keep your aunt well and happy. <laughs> Excuses, Mita. One capsule after every meal and one at bedtime. Is that understood? All I want is a straight answer, Martin. How am I? How do you feel? Perfectly fit. Then that's how you are. Now take your nap and I'll see you in a few days. Is she, Doctor? Hmm? Uh, perfectly fit? Oh, uh, well, she's not a young woman, John, of yeah. course, but... With the proper attention, there's no reason why she can't live for a long time to come. Uh-huh, I see. As long as no one does anything to upset her. Mm -hmm. Now, incidentally, how long since your last checkup? Oh, I haven't any idea. Why? Probably not since the last one I gave you before you left for New York. <laughs> yes, I guess that's right. How about one now, while I'm here? Well, what for? There's nothing wrong with me. Fine, fine. It'll only take a few minutes, John, and uh, it'll make your aunt feel better. Oh, well, okay, doctor. Let's go into the study. Well, Doctor, what's your prognosis? The same one I gave your aunt. Mm -hmm. With care, there's no reason why you can't live for a long time to come. Yeah, well, how long is a long time? I left my crystal ball in the office, John. How long do you want it to be? Forever? Oh, no, sir. Just until I'm uh, 92. <laughs> in that case, get plenty of rest. Yeah. Cut down on your smoking and starchy foods and... Uh, Go to bed every night at 9.30. <laughs> well, I'll be getting along. Take care of yourself, sir. Yes, you too, Doctor. And remember, a little fresh air and some rest never hurt anyone. Mm -hmm. Don't spend all your time at the piano. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll try not to. So long. Good luck, son. Uh, don't bother seeing me out. Oh, uh, goodbye, Miss Wickham. Nice to have met you. Nice to have met you. Uh, do you have to leave? Afraid so. Take care of our boy. Eve... What's the idea to ask him if he had to leave? You sound as if you want him to stay. I did. I, well, I don't want to go through with this, Johnny. Well, then we won't. Well, I mean, well, do we have to? You know the alternative. Now, look, hadn't you better get in a little practice before she comes down to dinner? I suppose so. Well, come on. Now, why not use that Chopin piece you used to play for me? It's one of his easier ones. Anything you say. Well, what are you waiting for? A miracle, I guess. Mita? I don't know what to say. Uh oh. You mean it was that bad? Oh, no, dear. It was beautiful. Uh -huh. You have a surprisingly light, delicate touch. Yeah, well, a combination of what Chopin demands in my years of practicing. Did you like it, Eve? Oh, yes. You're ready, John. Yeah. I'm ready. Well, what do you mean? 
I mean, I'm going to make arrangements for you to make your concert debut here in Chicago. After the European study? You... No, dear, I mean now. I've what? talked with Emil Stark. He'll listen to you if I think you're ready. What and I, mean... I do. You can play for him no, next no, week. No, I'm not, I'm not that ready, Aunt Mita. I need the polish that... That Rogowski can give me. Hey, Mulestock's the finest judge of talent in the city, John. It's a tremendous opportunity. And me, that. I'm tired now. I'm going to bed. Well, that does it. Oh, well, we can get along without the money, John. Maybe we can, honey, but Porco Syndicate can't. <laughs> This is an unexpected pleasure. Uh, Dr. Hanna, can you give me a few minutes? It'll have to be a very few minutes. My next patient's due now. What is it? Well, it's Aunt Mita. I'm, uh, I'm concerned about her health. Hmm? Now, please, doctor, tell me the truth. How is her heart? Considering her age? Yeah. In very good shape. <laughs> well, that's not saying anything. I can't give you an exact prognosis, John. I'd be a charlatan if I did. Yeah, but isn't there anything you can do for her? Doing all I can. Which is exactly nothing. Oh, no, no, no. I'm prescribing drugs. I recommend rest and quiet. Yeah, and, then, and... and then you sit back and wait for your patient to die, huh? Thousands of people, John, die from heart attacks every year who never had a heart history at all. It could happen to you or me. We're discussing Aunt Mita, Doctor. Could it happen to her? Well, of course it could. I, uh... I suppose any sudden... Shock would be bad, wouldn't it? I mean, I mean... I mean, what can I do to help? Now you've hit on it, son. Take care of yourself. That'll help your aunt more than anything else. Don't give her any cause to worry about you. You see, John, you mean everything to her. Well, all it boils down to is she's got a bad heart... And she could die tomorrow or live another ten years. Every time I think of that porco waiting for his money, I get scared to death. <laughs> scared to death. That's what I want her to be. Not me. If people do get scared to death, what have I got to lose? All right, it's either you or her, Johnny boy, and it sure isn't going to be you. Scared to death. Ah. The, the knife on my keychain. Cold steel against the soft part of her throat. Keeping quiet. I'm not asleep. Eve? Is it you, dear? I never realized before how small she really is. How helpless. Defenseless. I can't smell any perfume. It's you, John, isn't it? Please, dear, don't stand there like that. What's the matter? Please, John, say something. Oh, why can't you just die, Aunt Mita, so that I can live? Johnny! What? Eve, Eve. Eve, I, uh, I, I can't, I can't breathe. Oh! been at the piano almost two hours. Don't you mm. think that's enough? Okay. What do we do instead? Go dancing? Hmm? Bowling? Long walk along the lakefront? Mm. It's crazy, isn't it? 
Three weeks in the hospital and another two weeks back here and I still can't get used to it. All along, I figured it was her heart that was weak. And all along, she was protecting me. Well, Aunt Mita's really got her wish now. All I can do now is play the piano. One thing I never wanted is the only thing I got left. Oh, there you are, you two. How are you feeling, dear? Oh, I'm all right. Now, don't you forget you're supposed to lie down at five o'clock. No, no, I won't forget. Now, you mustn't be depressed, dear. Hundreds of thousands of people learn to live with their ailments. Mm -hmm. Your whole life's ahead of you. I'm afraid not, Aunt Mita. You know, it just might be over. Oh, you mean about the gambling debt? You... I've known about your gambling from the beginning, and Eve's told me about this man. If I pay Mr. Porco what you owe him, John, will you... Will I, ha will I pay you back? <laughs> sure. Aunt Mita, a dollar down and a dollar a week. You didn't let me finish. Will you promise to practice and study your piano? Johnny? You're... You're heaping coals of fire on my head, Aunt Mita. Oh, no, child. Quite the reverse. You see, ever since your... Your attack, I blame myself. If I hadn't sounded... Well, sounded so frightened, you wouldn't have been so startled when Eva came in the room. And after all, what did I have to be frightened about? What could I have possibly had to fear from you people? Suspense. You've been listening to Two Horse Parley, written for suspense by Walter Black. In a moment, the names of our players and a word about next week's story of Suspense. Are you out of tune due to irregularity? Then help yourself get back in tune with Kellogg's All Brand. Pleasant, isn't it? The feeling of well-being you get when constipation from lack of bulk is no longer a worry when harsh, irritating drug laxatives can be thrown away. Because Kellogg's All Bran is the normal, natural way to regularity. Its whole brand content gentles away constipation, supplies your system with the bulk-forming food you need for youthful regularity. And it tastes good, too. Fact is, Kellogg's All Bran is the one and only whole brand cereal that combines proved effectiveness with appetizing taste and crispness. So if you're out of tune... Help yourself get back in tune, as millions do, with Kellogg's All Brand. A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Brand. Heard in tonight's story were Jane Rose as Aunt Mita, Ellen McRae as Eve, Lyle Sudrow as Johnny, and Larry Haynes as Porco. Listen again next week when we return with Tonight at 5.55 by George Bamber. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. The latest news follows, then have gun will travel on CBS Radio. <laughs>